Another important topic in ICU is central venous accesses. And let me just give you a quick overview of the whole central venous accesses things. Central venous access is either tunneled or non-tunneled. Tunneled mainly for long-term use. When we say tunneled, that means they are tunneled underneath the skin. I will explain in further details in the next video when I talk about them separately. Remember, they are mainly for long-term use. They can stay weeks months if not longer non tunnel these are the most commonly used and the one that we use in critically ill patients this mainly for short term use and they are either centrally inserted or peripherally inserted when we say centrally inserted if you hear about the internal jugular vein central line subclavian vein central line femoral vein central lines and these can be small large versus small bore catheters and we'll come to those in more details the peripherally inserted central catheters you will never hear this what you're gonna hear when you come to us in the hospital's pick line the pick line stands for peripherally inserted central catheter these usually inserted through the upper arm all the way to the superior vena cava again i forgot to mention that central venous axis means the definition is a catheter that the tip of it ends in the superior vena cava right above right atrium let's say if this is the heart just the example and let's say this is the right atrium right when the superior vena cava enter here the tip will end right here any catheter with the tip ends here that means this is a central line so by definition again peripherally or pick line can be used for short term and also for long term and we'll come to that when we talk sep um, in a separate video about pick line why we need central lines complex medications like chemotherapy tpn total parental nutrition vasopressors things we use in critically ill patients a lot dialysis patient who needs dialysis like urgently or emergently or to start them like temporary dialysis catheter which are belongs to the non-tunneled the permanent dialysis catheter will come to them belongs to the tunneled and that's different from the fistula also why central lines large volume resuscitation if you have a crashing patient let's say having massive gi bleed you want to give them large amount of fluid massive amount of fluids and blood so you will need a central line and preferably large bore central line hemodynamic monitoring all of you know swan gans catheter or pulmonary artery catheter or even the regular central line the ij and subclavian the ij mainly you can use it for cvp central venous pressure monitoring and for uh, a central venous um, gas saturation specific iv fluid three percent normal saline in our hospital we always require central line for this again i think most hospital will require that as well lack of peripheral access mainly in iv drug user although some patients will have very difficult peripheral access so there is no way to get a peripheral access so you use a central line and critically ill patients if you have a critical ill patient they need a central access when i say central access non-tunneled centrally inserted whether this or this so advantages of the central lines no more blood draws you don't need to stick him anymore any all the blood tests you can draw it from the central line so that's a big advantages for patients you can have hemodynamic monitoring as i said cvp central venous pressure this is mainly with the uh, internal jugular vein and central venous saturation gas gas saturation infuse all different kind of medications and not just that infuse most of them together as long as you check the compatibility because central lines come with single port um, dual ports and triple or uh, three ports uh, triple lumen catheter for example now contraindications for that this these are the general contraindications but inject coagulopathy so critically ill patient most of the time they are coagulopathic they can have they can be in dic or they have severe thrombocytopenia or they are let's say an anticoagulation for a reason or another so it's not an absolute contraindication if you have a very critically a critical ill patient a crashing patient you don't have time to reverse it you still can go ahead and do it but has to be done by an experienced 
person that can get it from the first time and minimize the risk of the procedure because the risk of bleeding so it's kind of a relative contraindication you have to assess how urgent or how emergent if you have time you can wait you can wait until you correct this or give them some let's say ffps whatever to correct their coagulopathy and then put a central one but for emergency if you have an experienced one or, or if you are an experienced person go ahead and do it and preferably do the 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 places that you can put a pressure if there is any bleed let's say ij for example and femoral don't use subclavian for in coagulopathy because these are if you hit the artery you can put a pressure and stop it while the subclavian it's hard to reach the subclavian artery or perform manual pressure on the subclavian artery um another contraindication presence of a device or infection so let's say you have a pacemaker in that area or you have a, a permanent dialysis catheter a tunneled catheter in that area you cannot you should avoid that side or if you have abnormal anatomy let's say somebody on the arm has lymphedema or some having some distorted anatomy you should avoid that and this is the presence of an infection in the area absolutely need to avoid that that's quickly in general about central lines now we'll go and start talking about them in details